helmet. Remember yeah. Helmet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that old His helmet, helmet should, yeah. if, if Butch isn't in the Hall of Fame, his helmet should yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Remember okay. how tough he was? Yeah. Yeah. Start recording in five, so, oh. four, three, two, one. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Dirt M411 Sports Show. And today we have uh, two special guests. Uh, the first one, he's in his fifth decade of broadcasting. His name is Kelly Moore. He's the radio sports director at Cedar B. Please welcome him. And the second one, uh, who's also a big fan of me, um, has been in broadcasting for about 10 years and is a huge folk person for the Manitoba Lottery for the St. Boniface Hospital. Please welcome Greg McElwain. Thank you very much. Now, I guess the first one would be the, the Jets game one. Well, you know, the Jets did what they usually do. They came out very hard on home ice. Uh, they played very well. They really took it to St. Louis physically. The Blues couldn't muster up a lot of consistent offense. And it pretty much stayed that way until the tying goal. And this year's Jets team, for whatever reason, because really the only different player they have is Kevin Hayes, but they just don't seem to react well to adversity. And I thought the game really changed after St. Louis tied it. And then all of a sudden the Blues were getting a lot of chances in the slot area. Connor Hellebuck had to play very well to keep it 1-1 until that last goal with about two minutes to go. So Winnipeg's going to have to try to find a way to play more of a balanced game for 60 minutes, and especially they're going to have to be aware defensively. Was Bennington good, or did he get lucky with a few posts? Well, he, you always have to be lucky, lucky to be, be good. good. You know the saying, Jordan, and we saw a little bit of that on Wednesday night. There's no question. The Jets are a little bit allergic to holding leads in the third period, and that's been a trend that I know they want to break. They've done it 10 times this season, so... They have to, I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell Paul Maurice how to do his job. I'd like to some <laughs> nights, and I, and I try to channel my inner NHL coach, but there has to be something that is, is failing on that level in terms of their confidence going into the third period. Maybe this best strategy, Jordan, is just to be going into the third period either tied or behind. Or down by a goal. Because yeah. the Jets do very well when they're behind but by a goal. Does the coach really have a say in that? Because that's more of a player's coming together thing in the third. Well, it is, but you still have to employ a certain amount of strategy. You know, and the coach is there to manage, along with, you know, it's not just Paul Maurice. Uh, yeah. You know, he's, he has assistant coaches there as well. Uh, and, and so uh, the players have to execute, and the coaches have to give them the plan to execute. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing we have to always remember is there is another team playing the game, yeah, and they true. want it every bit as bad as the Winnipeg Jets yeah. and their fans do. That's what armchair Twitter people <laughs> forget. You must get those people a lot. Eh? All the time, and, that, and that's one of the big challenges in broadcasting right now is how to balance the voices that you're getting from experts and those that are in the middle of the situation, the voice from those that are paid observers and those that wish they were. And so balancing out the noise and sifting through all the different comments and deciding which part of the conversation yeah. you want to get involved in. It's, it's a genuine challenge. You see it on Twitter. Yeah. You're there all the time, yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nikolai either said they were playing with the puck too much in the third. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, you know, Nick hit on a thing. And, and if you went back and watched the video of that game, and thank goodness we have the ability to be able to do that now. Earlier in my career, you didn't. Uh, so he's right. Instead of dumping and chasing and forcing the St. Louis Blues into quick passes, for whatever reason, they decided they were going to try to maintain possession carrying the puck in over the St. Louis line. So what happens is they get to the blue line, it gets turned over, and now you've got to get back into your transition game. And I think that's where a lot of St. Louis's good chances came through. It wasn't that people weren't backing up. It's just that not enough of the game was played in the St. Louis zone. Yeah. All of a sudden it was played in neutral territory and then wound up in the Jets end. The Jets were having a real difficult time establishing anything in the St. Louis end. And for a guy 
that can carry the puck across right. the blue line as well as anybody in the NHL, Nikolai Ehlers, to admit that they tried to do that too much tells you a lot because so, that, th he's so a guy that can do that. Do they change that by dumping it in? Watch is for it, that in game two. Is it two. as yeah. simple as that? Then? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's, it seems simple in strategy, but... The, it, as the structure at St. Louis, is that a play in it too? Is it their structure? Well, you see, the other thing too is St. Louis, they might adjust as well. If they see that the Jets are dumping the puck in, whether it's into the right or the left corner. And that's, a, you know, there's a lot that goes into it there as well. It depends on who the St. Louis defenders are. Does a guy have a little trouble turning left? Does a guy have a little trouble turning right? Because then you're going to try to exploit that weakness and dump the puck into that corner. Kelly might disagree with me on this, but I think a lot of what plays into this series is how much success St. Louis has had down the stretch. They're comfortable in the style of hockey yes. that they play, and they can, be they can afford to be a little more patient. The Jets might not be as patient because they haven't had that yeah. success down the stre stretch. So that might be a little bit of a, a concern and just something to watch for, to see how patient the Jets but can be. But the Blues were struggling with our transi transition game. Yeah. So do you go more to that or well, more to the dumb inside? Well, see, you know, the, but the thing is, though, with the transition game, though, that is where... You know, you move the puck up the ice quickly and efficiently. And so if you are attacking with speed, then you can possibly take advantage of that. But the way St. Louis was defending, I really think that the Winnipeg Jets will probably look to dump and chase more tonight. Because that's what they were doing for the most part of the first and second period on Wednesday night. And doing it with a lot of success. They have big, strong, quick forwards. So they can, even if they don't get to the puck first... They can still get on top of a defenseman or an opposition forward first and force them either A, to make it a bad pass, or B, making a pass that winds up coming back out into neutral territory, and then you just reload and go back at them again. Um, do you guys think it was Connor Halbuck's fault? Like, the second did goal? Did he play well? He enough? played extraordinary well. One? Yeah, I think Could Nick Kipriel <laughs> think he didn't play well? But. Well, I would disagree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, Connor Helbert put them in a position where they, they where they were, where they had a yeah. chance to win. Yeah. He was rock solid. He made some difficult saves. He had a little bit of help from the posts yeah. as well. From the and buff and buff, you got yeah. that one that leaked through absolutely. Yeah. And you depend on that. You count on that. But Connor Hellebuck has been one of the Jets' top performers down the stretch. His game is really starting to round into form. Um, I don't uh, Bozak. Pick that, pick the inside that of that. Beautiful shot. Yeah, the beautiful. Post. You're yeah. not, you're not, you're not going to stop that shot most times. Billy Smith couldn't stop that. Well, I'll tell you what. Billy, unless, unless he would come out and hit you with your goal stick. Well, that's exactly it. Uh, yeah, it, it would have been interesting, as you were telling us just before we went to air, how that would have played out if uh, Mark Shifley had ran Billy Smith. And I can tell you, Mark might not have all of his teeth this morning uh, if that had been Billy Smith instead of Jordan Bennington. Yeah, <laughs> and I liked how the fans were booing him. Yeah. Well, you know, he's a young guy, right? Yeah. So you need to make him feel uncomfortable. That's... And didn't he say something on Twitter, too? There was some... Edmonton? Now, you're talking about some of the controversial yeah. comments yeah. that he made when he was 18 yeah. or 19. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of young people in this room right now. We've grown up, or you've grown up with Twitter and social media and I didn't grow up with that, and I can confess this to you, I would not have wanted every one of my thoughts captured for all time on social media. I don't either. Right? Yeah. So uh, I think you give a, a young guy a little bit of a pass yeah. on that, and yeah. to bring it up at this point in time, I don't know if I would have done that. There are some, obviously, who decided to do that, but you, Jordan Bennington, you just have to look at any of interviews that he's done. He's very... Very confident, and the way he's played, why wouldn't you be confident? And his players are confident around him. You know, Jordan, and the one thing, too, is booing. If, when the, the Winnipeg Jets fans boo a player, that's actually a sign of respect. Because that's Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby yeah. and Patrick Kane and Eric Carlson, and, and the list goes on and on. You're a, you are deemed to be the most important yeah. player for that team when you get booed. So if I was Jordan Biddington, I'd actually feel pretty good about that. 
Do you think um, he was scared when Patty shot the puck the first time? <laughs> you know, well, wouldn't you be? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if he saw it. Yeah, he, I, yeah. he um, that goal should have went in. He hit the post. The, oh yeah. no! Like, I thought yeah. that was it. Yeah, well, it, it, and he came that close, and even the one that went uh, off yeah. his glove, yeah. I think uh, he had a hard time uh, keeping up with that, but. Uh, uh, you know, the thing is now, too, uh, uh, goaltenders probably over the course of the summer are going to want to go back and have a review on the equipment because they are probably they probably have a few more uh, bumps and bruises than they uh, have had in the past because yeah. of the smaller yeah. equipment. Kelly's mentioning the equipment, right? The goalies yeah. changed their equipment. The NHL mandated a, a change in equipment. I wonder if that's one advantage maybe Bennington has over some of the veteran goalies where he didn't necessarily have to make the same adjustment. He wasn't playing with that equipment for a decade in the National yeah. Hockey League or even three years like Connor Hellebuck. We'll never know why Ken Dryden did what he did as a rookie. We'll never know no. why Patrick Carter Watt. Hart did what yeah. he did to begin his career with the Philadelphia Flyers. It's just, my father-in-law says this, I know what it is. It's just one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so is it smaller or what? The yeah, equipment they, is a little yeah. bit smaller, yes. Yeah. So... That makes a movie deal? Well, no, what it does is it gives... The whole idea was to increase goal scoring in the National Hockey League. They thought that uh, the goaltenders were overprotected. That, that doesn't work. Well, no, and the other thing, too, is, I mean, uh, from a goaltender's perspective, the puck gets shot harder and more accurate than it ever has been in the history of the game. And so, you know, you I think in some cases you've given the shooter uh, a bit of an unfair advantage. And now we're going to flip to the good old blue, which you are a big fan of, and I am too. Um, how do you think negotiations are going right now with the league and the players? Well, the league has kind of shut the door on any conversation in the last couple of days. That decision has, has come down. Jordan, I, I hate to give all the power to the man and to the corporations, which in this case is the league, but the players don't have a ton of bargaining power. The young players that are here from the United States that are making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, Canadian, they need that job. They want to play, yeah. and so for them to walk out to lose an entire season, I don't think the league wants that, but I don't think the players want that even more than the yeah. league doesn't. So. We've never really seen a work stoppage in the Canadian Football League. There's a little more money involved now. The league is as popular as it's ever been. It would be a mistake on both sides for them to shut down the league for any amount of time. Right, but I think, and, and I would certainly applaud the players, uh, those who are looking at things in terms of non-monetary, uh, but more medical and player safety. Yeah. There has to be a change to how the league looks after players when they're injured. It's as simple as that. We would want that in our lives. And I think it's only fair when there are young athletes who are putting their bodies on the line on the field that they should be given that same respect. Jordan, you remember uh, Jonathan Hefney yeah. of the Blue yeah. Bombers? Yeah. He suffered a very serious injury with Montreal. He's still rehabbing that injury. And he's an example of some of the things that maybe need to change. Yes. That once you leave the game and you've left the game, injured there should be some supports for those players well, after they've yeah, left the right game. now it, it, they're covered for a year but if their injuries extend beyond a year which jonathan hefneys has then he's on his own and that's not right so because he, he be, got hurt playing football should there be insurance then well that's what and that's what the players There's are pushing for and they've and they've tried to get workers compensation to come on board in the various provinces as well yeah. um what do you think of the report of um Owners holding like over six million apparently to the players until the CBA ratifies. Well, that's that is their prerequisite. Now the thing is, you want a happy workplace, you want a good relationship with your employees. So obviously, that's not going to happen when you make that decision. But from the league's perspective, for what Greg just described. Those players need that money. And so if they don't have that money, then they're more apt 
to come to the bargaining table and maybe give up a little bit more than they would if they had that money in their pockets. It's just, it's strategy. You could agree with it or disagree with it, but at the end of the day, Jordan, they're business people and that's how it works in business. How will Willie Jefferson affect the Bombers? Like, will he be a good fit? Well, you know, I don't know a lot about his personality. You've seen on the field, he's got a very dynamic personality. He's very flamboyant. But let's face it, he's one of the top talents in oh, the league. Yeah. He is a game I remember genius. that banjo bowl pick. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's sort of the play I, I want, had. <laughs> I want that this year. You want that this year, <laughs> yeah. but for a guy in the blue and gold, right? Yeah. And so he's that. that's the perfect play to point to. Yeah. If you want to explain what he can do in terms of being a, a, a game changer and his flamboyance, you saw all of that within that one play. So as long as he can get along with, he doesn't have to get along with all the players, just as long as he gets along with everybody on the defense, he can have a gigantic impact on what the players that do. Do you think that Nico Fulmer fawned back from his injury? Yeah, I think he will. Uh, I, and I thought even Matt started to play well down the stretch. Uh, and, you know, again, a lot of it, too, is the game plan that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers employ. Like, Mike Riley didn't have an Andrew Harris. No. You know, Trevor Harris to a certain extent did, but Trevor Harris also throws a lot of interceptions. You know, so... Where, have fun, Edmonton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. But, you know, when you're Matt Nichols and you have an Andrew Harris, you're probably not going to put the ball in the air as often as you would if you did not have that kind of a ground game. I so, know, but... You need to throw the ball. You yes, you do. Run all the yeah, time. yeah, and and I think uh, I still think the Bombers are are hoping that either through uh, free agency or or perhaps uh, uh, through some good scouting that they are able to to discover a downfield threat because that's the one thing lacking in their game. What do you think the new soccer team will do to the city? Well, I, you know, I'm old enough to remember the old Winnipeg Fury. I don't know if they I were I wasn't around. here then, no, no. So I attended their first first game. That would have been in uh, 1986 or 1987 at the University of Manitoba. Was Troy Westwood playing? I think he may have played yeah, he, for them. Yeah, he was them with them for a while, yeah. Yeah, at one point. Uh, they won a national championship down the stretch. Uh, I believe that they're going to be extremely popular. A lot of people don't realize that more kids play soccer in Canada than play hockey. So there is now finally an opportunity for kids to, to have pro. a team, correct, to go yeah. pro, to have a team to cheer for. There are um, a, a multitude of benefits that to have Because that's half the battle in Canada. There's not that many professional teams to go pro on. Well, and, yeah. and in so- In Canada. Well, right. and I mean, what entices kids to play hockey? Go it's pro. the idea of winning the, the Stanley dream. Cup, yeah. right? And so now and that, that dream is a little bit closer <laughs> to home. And what? And, and the dollars? The, the, oh, oh, yeah, they don't hurt. They don't, they they don't, don't hurt, hurt either. <laughs> no, they don't. Um, why, why do you guys uh, become a big fan of me? Like, what do I do that made you become a big fan of me? Well, I'll tell you what, Jordan. There would be a lot of individuals who would have the challenges... Uh, that you have and would let that become the way they chose to live their life. And the fact that you don't, the fact that you are doing exactly what you were put on this earth to do is an inspiration. And because you've chosen uh, to do that in an industry that, that I'm involved in, uh, it, it brings it close to home. So, and, and, you, and you do an, an outstanding job. I love how you interview. And I want to echo those sentiments and add, Jordan, just the fact that you have the ability to answer a straight, ask a straightforward question, get a straightforward answer. And I'll be honest with you, I have learned a lot from you on that front because this guy used to tell me, I used to talk a little bit too much before asking a question. And you do it exactly the way it's supposed to be, Jordan. You do it the way it's supposed to be done. Okay. And I have a special surprise for all you guys. This is... Is it toilet paper? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is um, my own t-shirt. Oh, oh my goodness. That you guys are getting. You're oh. like Kelly Clarkson on The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys put them on? Oh, really absolutely. Fast? Absolutely. Right. So we can get a shot. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. Do you want me to step over there? I have. Thanks, Jordan. 
Now, how did you know? How did you know my size? Or did you just guess? Um, my research teacher. Oh yeah, made a guess. Let's yeah. see how she did good. Or he. She. 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 All right. Yeah. Jennifer. Jen. Yeah, you know, I was just gonna say you should give her a shout out for well, sure. I yeah. know Jennifer. So I know Jennifer for a long time. So that's oh, good. Look at that. I got lucky there. Does it fit? Oh, Rob perfect. It fit. It fits. Kelly, fine. maybe you got mine. <laughs> Possibly. There we go. Yeah. This is great. I will Be switch it to wear this. Yeah. You bet. Thank you, Jordan. What a fantastic gift. Right on. Okay. Stop recording in five, four, three, two.